She the one from the number one district, yes. right? Uh, by show of hands, uh, I, I was very fortunate enough to be at the DNC uh, convention. Um, uh, by show of hands, how many people are familiar with uh, the meaning of Kamala's name? Good, this is why UCLA pays me the little bucks. <laughs> the meaning of her name is Lotus Flower. For people who don't know, I've spent a lot of time at ashrams. And a lotus flower actually thrives in the dirtiest, nastiest, dankest American political water. <laughs> but the thing that we don't always know, because it produces this beautiful white flower, it's this beautiful fragrance and blossom, is that it has a lot of help in what we think are the murky waters. There are a lot of things that work to help build it up into a particular space. There's a lot of anointing in that water. And what I want to say is I was in the presence of this beautiful young black woman in her office on a project that we will see hit the light of day at some point. We, you know, that's a little top secret right now. But uh, she was just pre preparing and talking with her staff, which by the way, shout out to y'all staff. Yeah. Uh, shout out to y'all staff. Your staff is incredible. incredible. And they were talking, and I grew up in going to a Baptist church with my grandma, and I felt like my body, like, you know, having a reaction. And she was just saying, like, can you give me a little orange juice? Can, you know, like, I'm just going over my, my notes for the, the vote and everything. And then she started to speak. And I said, this woman is anointed. This woman is anointed. Anointed. And it is really rare that you get to meet people like that, where you can't teach anointing. You can't appoint the anointing. You can't go to school to be anointed. You just got it like that. You're not the five, not the four, not the three, not the two, the one, the one from number one. And a lot of times when you are the first, they make you feel like you will be the last. And you are not because your work is not done. When you are anointed, like Brother Jamal was just saying, you are always already appointed. Yeah. And right now, it gives me great pleasure to bring you up here for the Bayer Rustin Pauli Murray Anointing Appointing Award. Let's give it up for our sister, yeah. Corey Jones. I love you back. I, I, the pressure. <laughs> um, first of all, I don't think I've ever had an introduction like that. Um, thank you so much for that heartfelt introduction and for the reminder. For the reminder um, that we just never know. We're walking in who we are. But we have to be submissive enough to walk in who we are. And as we're walking in who we are, other people benefit. You know, and so uh, I think this work is so much about submission to, like, the call, mm -hmm. submission to the mission. Um, because we can say all day long, I want to be, I want to go, I want to know, you know, this and that and, you know, and, and what I believe, who I believe I'm supposed to be. But how low are we willing to go to get there? And when I say low, what are we willing to give? How much are we willing to put on the line for the people that we claim to want to serve and represent? And so um, I want to say thank you to the National Black Justice uh, Coalition for your tireless dedication uh, and for bringing it back. And just like um, the, uh, one of the honorees said, you know, making sure that the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation understands why you are important and why we need to prioritize this work, keeping it before their faces. And so to Dr. Johns and, and to my friend, Dr. Hunter, in this fabulous, <laughs> looking fabulous on tonight. Um, uh, and to all the honorees, thank you so much. You know, I'll say this. Part of the work and one of the reasons I was being honored, uh, I'm being honored on tonight, one is for the Equal Rights Amendment. And let me say this. The Equal Rights Amendment, people was like, why, Corey, why did you choose to carry the Equal Rights Amendment? First of all, um, alongside Ayanna Presley, we are the first black women in the history of the United States, 101 years, to carry the Equal Rights Amendment in the United States Congress. 
And it's significant because people ask, Corey, why do you want to, you know, that's like a white woman thing. You know, we don't like need that. Didn't we get that already? But this is the thing. So many of the things that we are fighting for are up under the umbrella of the Equal Rights Amendment. And so, yes, people tried to silence Pauli Murray and, and didn't want to show or didn't want to acknowledge her work in the Equal Rights Amendment to get that done. Because one of my favorite quotes of hers, and I have to I have to read it because what we're talking about with the Equal Rights Amendment is that inclusivity. We're talking about enshrining gender equality in the U.S. Constitution because it has not been done. And so even though it's been 101 years, the work still is there. As long as we're here, the work is there, and so it's for us to get it done. But she said, and I quote, black women as, as a group have the most to gain from the, equal, from the adoption of the Equal Rights Amendment. Amendment. Black women have been doubly victimized by the twin immoralities of racial and sexual bias. And she coined the term Jane Crow to label those twin immoralities of sexism and racism um, that we face. But understanding that it has to be, we never did put there, the, the word woman is not a part of the Equal Rights Amendment. Because it's for all, it's that piece of inclusivity that is missing. And so, yes, I chose to carry it because so many of the things that we are missing come up under that. And so if I can't speak up for those who are the most marginalized, those who are the most tested, those who are the most pushed back, then what am I doing in the United States Congress as a, re as a registered nurse and as a pastor and as just a human on this earth with this dark, beautiful, melanated skin? Why am I there if I won't speak up? And so lastly, I'll say this. I'll, I'll, lastly, I'll say this. The other reason I was, uh, I was, uh, I'm being honored is because of my reparations bill. Um, I have the very first comprehensive. It's a first of its kind comprehensive reparations bill um, called the Repar called Reparations Now. Um, and some of you all in this room helped us to get this done and I will never forget your work. But the thing is about that is everybody, so many people said, don't do it, Corey. Don't do it because black folks can't even agree on, on reparations. But you know what? We'll never get it done if we keep saying who does not agree because other folks re got reparations and they didn't have to agree. So we're pushing forward with this legislation and I don't care about a name or fame or a title. As you see, I put myself on the line and I was unseated. I lost my seat um, just a few weeks ago, just the same way that Jamal did. But we, I tell you what, they didn't silence us. Like he said, all they did was clip those strings that kept us bound. And so now we get to fly, fly, fly. And so we get to fly with you. So thank you all so much for this honor and let's get to work. St. Louis, that's right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh,